You are positioned at 13 degree and 18 seconds of Sagittarius according to most astrological apps following western calculation. But actually your fully illuminated disc is shining in the constellation Scorpius near its brightest star Antares. No wonder you are looking mysterious and stunning, shrouded in black on this ghostly cosmic stage and you think you are unreadable. You find comfort in that idea perhaps because you believe it's this lack of total illumination that makes you look interesting. Onlookers will lose interest once they see behind the veil. You can't even talk about this deep-seated fear with anyone. I mean, what's the point of appearing like a bright rounded disc, flat and boring like every other full moon, isn't it? You want to be special and to be admired as one. Strawberry moon, huh? Earthlings must be kidding. Yes, you get it. Wild strawberries ripen in June and some Native American tribes called you after it. Because of the importance of the wild strawberry as a spring food staple, the name strawberry moon was given to you by the Algonquin, Ojibwe, and other tribes. The native North American type is the Virginia strawberry, also known as the mountain strawberry or common strawberry. It grows naturally in the United States, including Alaska and Canada. Europe has its own native wild strawberry, the Alpine strawberry, also called as European strawberry or woodland strawberry. In Alaska, the Haida tribe uses a more all-encompassing berry name, Berries Ripen Moon. The creek of the southeastern United States call you the Blackberry Moon, while the Shawnee of Ohio and Pennsylvania refer to you as the Raspberry Moon. Your other native names are Green Corn Moon and, quite fancifully, Hot Moon. Sweat was trickling into my eyes while holding the camera, so yes, it is indeed quite hot in Bangalore. In the Southern Hemisphere and Southern Africa, however, you are called the Cold Moon as the winter solstice approaches in those parts of the world. Do you know that your Celtic names are Horse Moon, Diane Moon and Rose Moon too? Or the fact that English call you Flower Moon and Planting Moon? Other sources quote mid moon as your Anglo-Saxon name because this was the time for mowing the mids or meadows. Mead is a drink created by fermenting honey mixed with water and in some countries mead is also called honey wine. The time around the end of June was when honey was ready for harvesting which made this the sweetest moon in people's imagination. The word honeymoon traces back to medieval Europe. The tradition of calling the first month of marriage the honeymoon may be tied to you because of the custom of marrying in June and it was common for newlywed couples to drink a fermented beverage made from honey for a moon cycle of 30 days after their wedding to usher in good luck and fertility. For Hindus, this is Vat Purnima. During the three days of this full moon, married women will show their love for their husbands by tying a ceremonial thread around a banyan tree for those who practice. The celebration is based on the legend of Shavitri and Satyavan. Savitri was a princess who married an exiled prince named Satyavan who was prophesied to die early. She saved her husband from the god of death, Yama, persuading the deity to restore his life. Around every 20 years, your presence coincides with the summer solstice. In areas where strawberries may not be prevalent or gardening times vary, Humans gave you names related to nature. The cocktail of the southern red plains from Oklahoma to Mississippi, for example, call you the windy moon after seasonal weather patterns and spring storms. In China, likewise, you are called the lotus moon. The Inupiat and Tinglik people of Alaska call you the moon of birthing, as many northern animals give birth in June, giving their offspring the longest possible time to grow and mature before winter returns. Similarly, the Arafo of the red plains call you Moon when the buffalo bellows, referring to the mating calls of such sacred beast. The Omaha tribe of Nebraska has a similar name for you. Moon when the buffalo bulls hunt the cows. Do you know that an asteroid posing as a pseudo-moon following Earth around the Sun for the last two millennia, and astronomers just noticed it.
scientists first discovered the space rock called 2023 FW13 in March using the Pan Stars Observatory in Hawaii. At first glance, the asteroid seemed to be orbiting our planet, which would make it another U. But this tailgating asteroid is actually orbiting the Sun and just happens to be traveling at roughly the same path and pace as our planet. Looks like another secret keeper like you. This 20 meter long asteroid is little different though. Usually quasi-moon trail Earth for just a few decades. From data they have collected about its orbit, astronomers calculated that the asteroid has been in the vicinity of our planet since about 100 BC, the year Julius Caesar was born, and scientists got to know about its existence like now. You think you will keep on rotating around this planet and habitually hide from me just like you do it with all. Well, you got the fundamentals wrong. We, including the Sun, are actually rotating around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. According to the American Museum of Natural History, our galactic home is called the Milky Way after its apparent milky white appearance as it stretches across the night sky. In Greek mythology, this milky band appeared because the goddess Hera spread milk across the sky. Around the world, the Milky Way is known by different names just like you. For example, in China, it is called Silver River and in the Kalahari Desert in South Africa, it's called the Backbone of Night. The Milky Way is spinning at 210 to 270 km per second and takes about 200 million years to complete one rotation. In 90 seconds, for example, we all move some 12,500 miles in orbit around the galaxy's center. We take about 225 to 250 million years to revolve once around the galaxy's center. Moreover, as the planets orbit in the plane of the solar system, they change their direction of motion continuously with Earth returning to its starting point after 365 days. Well, almost to its same exact starting point. But the galaxy itself isn't stationary, but rather moves due to the gravitational attraction of all the over-dense matter clumps and equally due to the lack of gravitational attraction from all of the under-dense regions. If you're not following me anymore, don't worry. Keep on paying attention and you will get it. At the center of the Milky Way sits a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star. About 4 million times the mass of the Sun, this beast consumes anything that strays too close, gorging on an ample supply of stellar material, enabling it to grow into a giant. In 2022, we imaged this at the core of our galaxy for the very first time. Everything else in the galaxy revolves around this powerful gateway to nothingness. Strictly speaking, everything in our galaxy does not orbit the supermassive black hole at the center. Everything in the galaxy orbits the center of mass of the galaxy. The supermassive black hole just happens to be at the center. There may be around 200 billion galaxies like ours in the observable universe. And the universe, for whatever reason, doesn't appear to have an overall spin or rotation to it. 
and doesn't appear to be revolving around anything else when everything inside is spinning. Similarly, the largest observed cosmic structures don't appear to be spinning, rotating or revolving around any other structures. We are all spinning, like a pinwheel, but a new study has found that dark matter has slowed the rotation of its bar by at least 24% since its formation nearly 14 billion years ago. Dark matter, one of the most elusive materials in the universe. Visible matter, also called the baryonic matter, consists of baryons, an overarching name of, of subatomic sub particles such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. Over 80% of all matter in the universe, however, is made up of material scientists have never seen. It's called dark matter, and we only assume it exists because without it, the behavior of stars, planets, and galaxies simply wouldn't make sense. Here is what we know about it, or rather what we think we know. It emits no light or energy and thus cannot be detected by conventional sensors and detectors. But if we cannot see dark matter, how do we know it exists? The answer is gravity. The force exerted by objects made of matter that is proportional to their mass. Since the 1920s, astronomers have hypothesized that the universe must contain more matter than we can see because gravitational forces that seem to be at play in the universe simply appear stronger than the visible matter alone would account for. Astronomers believe that the entire galaxy is embedded in an even larger halo of invisible dark matter, and in a way, everything in our galaxy orbits around the supermassive black hole at the center, all surrounded by this dark matter. Does mystery appear mysterious anymore? See, we are all part of a gigantic ball 
and it's very common to hide. It's exceptional to be clear and transparent in this cosmic dance floor. But there's no one way to be. It's abundantly clear that we are not meant to do one thing as we are in the midst of just too many things. Even the most of us get so focused in the myriad details of our daily existence for livelihood needs that we tend to forget this entire big picture. Is this universe God's handiwork or dream or we are dreaming about it? The book on the Upanishad tells us that both the waking state and dream state of our life are illusory. They are mere creations of our consciousness. The highest level of our consciousness is that of Turiya, when we cease to see the world of matter and feel only one consciousness everywhere. Giordano Bruno, the philosopher, said the world is an eternal enigma and our only connection with it is that we form part of it when we leave. Man must finally quit the scene to reappear no more. Death annuls all the features of life. Truth, God, immortality are delightful concepts. They are true, but standing on no verifiable basis. But then, dark matter can't be verifiable too, and we are certain of its existence. Not everything can be verified, like it can't be verified that we are nothing in front of universe. And I haven't even gone to multiverse and cosmos yet. But it is still true that just like the strawberry moon, we are the universe. I had no plans to make this video, but once I stepped out and saw last night's moon, I felt compelled to stay awake at night to create this video. It takes a lot of hard work to create such content, but I chose to sacrifice my relaxation need at weekend as this gives me pleasure. If it did to you as well, do share and subscribe. Till the next time.